Well, hi and welcome back to my channel. It is a beautiful sunny morning. Today's subject is photographing flowers. Now this is a tough gig. There are so many things to consider here. Yeah, it is a big challenge. I'm going to take it on as though I'm at where I work, that uh, the owners want me to take some photographs of their flowers so that they can hang them up on the wall in the building there, down the hallway, something like that. They are a super challenge. There are tons of things to consider here, especially the background. One mistake with the background and the image is stuffed. So, attention to detail. And the flower itself has to be in mint condition, no blemishes, and, a, and the leaves is around it as well. Everything has to be the best of the best. So we have a flower that best represents it, the plant that it comes off. So I'm going to throw in a bit of an extra uh, challenge here as well. A theme. And that is I want to be landing on the flower. So try and capture them just about to land if I can. Otherwise a beautiful pose from them. Just going to take this photograph from a nice beautiful looking flower to a whole new level and make it much more interesting having to be in the scene it also tells a very strong story the relationship between the two be the perfect uh, way I'm envisioning this thing not going to be easy I don't have much time to do this of course because I'm at work but uh, just in my smoke oven lunchtime I'll be uh, doing it so all right so got some nice lavender out the back here I'll start with them first and we got some beautiful succulents along here so the challenge is on all right so camera settings very important because I'm going to photograph a fast moving object I'm having a shutter speed of a thousandths of a second might try and keep the aperture as low as possible because I want to blur out the background and ISO to uh, suit the exposure. Now because flowers can be super reflective, not can be, they are, I need a correct metering reading on it. So I'm going for a spot meter to help us out, make sure we get correct exposure on the subject itself. Now with white flowers, Oh man, <laughs> they've got to be in the shade. And actually, yeah, you know, I've got a beautiful sunny day, but I really would have preferred really high cloud that diffuses the sun nice. Then we get the beautiful even light. There's no dark patches in the background and whatever. You know, that would would have been the perfect scenario. So at the minute, I'm going to have to look for one's flowers that are in the shade. So we're getting nice light rather than harsh light. Uh, yeah, whites, white flowers, they're gonna be the hardest challenge. That is for sure. We can use a polarizer to stop a lot of the uh, glare, you know, the blow out hi highlights on a flower. It can help out a bit sometimes. All right, so I'm using a zoom lens. So my 70 to 300 millimeter L lens to help really blur out that background it's very important as i already said yeah that background we really have to pay attention to detail otherwise it's going to be a drama and we won't have a good image all right waffling on let's get started get out there and find my first subject and hopefully the bees do the right thing by me well this one here is the one i've chosen the flowers at the back are just far enough away where they're blurring out and looking really good. So all I need is the bee to come on this side where the sun is and uh, we'll have something beautiful set up here. So yeah, again, nice bit of uh, soft purple in the background. But this beautiful flower, it's looking awesome. And uh, lots of bees around. Uh, keep my uh, exposure down nicely 
because these petals at the top here are quite reflective and the stalk as well um, yeah just moving slightly over this way a little bit where the other stalks in the background there aren't going to cause any dramas because they are very reflective so just looking down the barrel of the uh, R6 <laughs> yeah we need to um, really pay attention to the background chosen my next subject and that's the succulent these bunch of flowers here are the best ones for me to take a photograph of uh, I've got some nice leaves around here that aren't too too bad a condition and the background there we have a variegated uh, hedge it's coming out really nice and soft in the background there nice soft yellow and light green just have to wait for a bee to turn up and get the shot really nice camellias and other types of flowers like these that are out but um, unfortunately the flowers on most of them that are in good positions aren't looking any good there's a lot of uh, <laughs> discoloration coming on them now so I'll forget about this one move on down here it's a plant that's caught my eyes got nice little red flowers on them down there have a beautiful little dainty flower here they're tiny tiny little flowers uh, they'd be nice but it's not what I'm really after I'm after a bit more color now uh, I want these red ones here so they'll work out beautiful there are bees landing on them so just a matter of having a really good look at which flower is going to look nice in amongst the bunch or on its own or you know just a couple around it would be okay but you can see the problem I'm going to have the background the sky is breaking through the canopy a little bit there so uh, I'm gonna try and keep it at my eye level if possible try and avoid that problem in the background because <sighs> otherwise it's going to be too bright and it's going to attract your eye to that not the subject uh, yes yeah, so we need a nice little clump or one on its own and one just opening like this might oops sorry with the camera like that might be nice as well something yeah maybe even this one here that might work you know I'll keep looking around try and find one that'll work out for us uh, but yeah if we go down too low it's dark in there we're gonna have a dark background and it's yeah it's not going to work so it's just a matter of keep looking find the right one pay a lot of attention to detail of the background and everything around it and uh, we'll get a good shot I'm sure so I need something yellow so I got some nice flowers here getting a few bees on there so I'm going to get into it before they nick off
I've got these nice white flowers here. Beautiful little bunches. But there's so many challenges here because we need to separate that flower array from the others because they're reflective in the background. So we don't want them to be brighter than what that is. We don't want them to be a distraction. So it is super hard. I'm finding it a big challenge with these uh, and having a bee come on the one that I want it to go on. So just keep moving around left to right until you get positioned properly where the background's looking okay. And hopefully when we get home and look on the computer that we haven't made an, an error. Well, it's a bloody windy morning and it's going to rain very soon. But what I'm really happy with is those images. They worked out really well. Uh, my model could have done a little bit better for me, but uh, we take what we're given with them, uh, the bees. But yeah, I couldn't be happier with those images because I used all my skills, paid attention to detail, I haven't had to do any work as far as uh, using a patch tool or uh, any masking in Photoshop I took did take them into Photoshop and did some minor work there's a few of those flowers didn't quite look three-dimensional so using a little bit of contrast uh, a little bit of vibrance just a couple of little, little tiny tweaks just help them to pop and stand out a lot better that's pretty well much it and I am certain if I had a real client, they would be really happy to hang them on their wall and hand over the money to me. Now I really do liken this sort of work to the same as being a wedding photographer or um, doing promotional photographs of the building and uh, the garden and all these sort of things for promotional work with uh, pamphlets or whatever the company wants to use them for on their website or whatever to promote their business so you, you would definitely charge accordingly oh my camera just dropped down well let's just move back a little bit over here so we can see you uh, good on yours mate <laughs> so yeah charging probably for a shoot like this with those images somewhere around three grand printed would be a fair day's pay because it's taken us years to get here. A long apprenticeship with photography. And uh, yeah, I've put all my years of experience into those images. And funnily enough, I'm actually, I can say, I'm really happy with them. They've turned out really well. And I'm my worst critic. There's always something. There still is. <laughs> like the models I like a bit better. But overall, man, yeah, can't complain about how they turned out in the time frame that I've had to do this. Alright, so there's a hell of a lot of channel challenges for you if you're going to you've been watching this video so you could uh, find out a bit more about taking photographs of flowers and things like that. Uh, yeah, attention to detail, background super important so that uh, we don't have to do any work in Photoshop. Distractions in the background, Photoshop can't always help you. It doesn't always work. So getting it done properly in camera will help us out immensely. But now that I've sort of mentioned this to you and you're gonna pay more attention to the, the background, it's going to drive you mad. I've opened a Pandora's box. Especially when I'm photographing wildlife, you don't get the opportunity to uh, make sure that the background is okay before you take the image. Bird lands on a branch, you've got to take that shot quickly and uh, then you worry about things later on. So I have uh, had so many images spoilt. 
I waffled on enough because it's so windy today. There are branches and crap down everywhere and I have a lot of work to do. And speaking of work, it is time for me to get into it. And, all right, so I hope you got something out of this. And if you'd like to subscribe to my channel and get more of this amazing stuff, click on my pretty little face just down here in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. And if you hit the little bell, you'll get notification whenever I do anything else like this. And if you really like this video, and you would like to give me the thumbs up, I would like that a lot. That would be awesome. It'll help my channel grow, hopefully. <laughs> so that would be awesome if you can be bothered. Just clicking on that uh, thumbs up. Really good. What's thing on? Moving on. All right, now if you'd like to go and have a look at the other mad and crazy things I've been doing over the years, click on my icon right here at the end of this video. It'll take you to my channel, where there's over, oh, there's about 200 videos to choose from. I talk about photographing and filming in a forest environment, uh, using a flash sometimes. If I buy any equipment, I'll give you my honest opinion on them. And when I go on holidays, I go on adventures, and I'll take you with me. So go have a browse, there'll be something there of interest to you, I am sure. And just remember, if you don't do, you don't get it. So get out there and start photographing and filming wildlife, and I'll catch you on the next one. Better get to work. See ya.